breaking news out of the Bronx here today. As we mentioned going into break here, Drew Rasmussen of the Rays is now placed on the 60-day IL with a flexor strain, which is an elbow injury that is typically very bad news for pitchers. This all in the hills of his seven-inning outing last night with seven punchies, just a 2.62 ERA for the team that is making history in baseball. Nelly, I think I have to defer to you first, obviously, former big league pitcher. What does this news initially make you think? Well, that's very scary when it's initially right after a tremendous start. He seemed lights out last night, and then you hear not just the IL, but 60 day right away. So that's very, very disturbing. Um, you know, this is a young man who had an opportunity to jump into the starting rotation, wasn't initially a starter over his career, jumps into it last year, 28 starts, and pitches fantastic, and it looked like he was really starting starting to gain ground to be one of their more uh, counted on pitchers for the season. This is a tremendous blow and we talked about how do, how do these things happen to come back right. into the race. This is one of those big reasons why I'm scared for the Rays. The Rays now have Tyler Glass now who just got pulled from his last rehab start for left left side soreness. Mm -hmm. Now you lose Jeffrey Springs to Tommy John surgery. Shane Baz to Tommy John surgery. A flexor strain potentially could lead to Tommy John surgery. There are way too many pitchers missing. I don't care pitcher by committee or not. It's scary when you lose that many starting pitchers. X, I want to say I'm scared for the Rays, but time and time again, they've proved us wrong in scenarios such as this. Is it going to be another next man up mentality? I mean, it has to be. Uh, I look at, you know, the good thing is they have a young Taj Bradley who's thrown the ball extremely well every time he's gotten the opportunity. Um, it, it'll be interesting to see what the timetable is for Glass now because he was on his way back and having an opportunity to come back into this rotation would give you the, one of the deadliest one-two punches in all of baseball. So you hope that's not an extended amount of time that he's out. Um, but this is tough because Rasmussen had quietly been one of the better pitchers in the rotation. And you know, know doing what he did against the Yankees he's hasn't even given up a run in his career against the Yankees so seeing the type of Yankees killer he quietly is that's even tough within itself in the in their own division so uh the one thing is that this team didn't have last year is what we see with this lineup the offense can help supplement a loss for Rasmussen we understand that this is one of the best development uh pitching developments when it comes to the young players that come up in this organization uh, if anybody can kind of withstand a loss in the rotation, we understand it can be the race. 76 pitches in that outing last night through yeah. seven. I, does anything like, is that ring any sort of bell or that set off any alarms no, for you? No, it's only 76 pitches. Yeah, that's really, what I that's thought. What that was a low number. A yeah. low number and not a lot of, not a lot of uh, you know, high pressure situations where he's, you know, trying to yank off sliders. He just seemed cool, under, uh, in control, command of his, his arsenal. And yet you see today, just uh, it's just shocking that it's that, that severe without hearing something last night at all. So this is an interesting conversation that I heard on a podcast. Number one, he has had Tommy John surgery twice already throughout the course of his career. Number two, different things are taking place. People are pointing to, you know, pitch timer maybe could add to pitcher fatigue. The fact that you're cutting down, obviously, on the use of sticky stuff. So you're trying to throw harder velocity. Obviously, you're straining your arm more. I, I, we, when you look at those factors, I mean, obviously, we can't speculate here. But what would be a timetable or what, what would you say is going on with him and it, it I, just I know, seems we just, it, the news just broke. Yeah, but. it just seems odd that it's just so severe so quickly because there was no there was no missing some time. Like yeah. Max Scherzer going down, neck spasms, back, this, that, the other thing. Sure, you can see, oh, okay, something is really wrong with him. He's just been hiding it the whole time. N th there were no signs whatsoever. Yeah. I mean, this guy it, was cruising last night and, and looked fantastic, and you, you were hoping to see him his next outing. And, and with all the guys that the Rays are losing, it's amazing that this franchise, it, there's never been a, oh, you know, all the money they paid for No, no, no. It's not all the money they paid for pitching. It's all the mu the pitching that they have developed, and they get hurt, and yet they still, that, that wheel just keeps on going. It's a, th Their development, as X said, has been outstanding, and it doesn't matter who the name is. They'll find somebody to plug in his place. It's just rare that you'll see a team just instantly go to that 60-day IL so yeah. quickly. Sometimes they take more time than this. So this must be pretty serious. It's even more serious. The Tampa Bay Rays, their next 45 games, 30 of the 45 are against teams above 500. They're going to have a really tough road ahead the next couple of months. That's what also concerns me about this pitching issue. Yeah, they had a soft schedule, obviously, to start the season. Yeah. People are pointing mm -hmm. to that uh, as a reason for their success. Obviously, they've proved, again, everyone wrong.